Hi, it's Bruce again. Uh, welcome to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Lab. Um, if you've been following my work the last few years, you, you've seen more than one uh, precision reference that I've been trying to work on for my bench. Just uh, really wanted to get into uh, seeing what it would take and what you know, uh, how I might finesse it and so on. Fascinated by them and um, wanted to pair it with my decavider and and uh, provide a uh, an adjustable range uh, digit selectable reference. And I've worked on uh, on refurbishing and modifying uh, these analogic units, um, providing a uh, uh, a zero reference on the back. Uh, and improving the uh, uh, the overall accuracy of the unit uh, precision because you reference it to a zero that uh, is much better than it originally was. Um, I had this, um, I called it a five decade DC calibrator. Um, it used a, um, a Geller board, um, I think it was the S. VR2, if I remember right, that's in here. Geller uh, Labs, uh, more than a decade ago, I think, uh, they uh, produced a, uh, a kit and, uh, and also some boards that were uh, very, very well made, extremely stable. Um, I'm really sorry that they're not readily available anymore. The guy stopped doing it, and I, I think he passed the business on to his son. Uh, but this is my Geller calibration unit. Um, you mentioned the analog, analogic. Um, right now I have an LM399 based unit that I uh, uh, purchased uh, from a fellow who's providing them in Germany. Uh, I found that it was temperature sensitive, so I started cobbling together and experimenting with a temperature control device. And... Um, I'm right now experimenting with that. So anyway, what I found was, you know, it, it's I love working on all this stuff. It's fun. But uh, tracking the, uh, the response was a real pain because I was doing it all manually from my uh, HP 34401A. And I knew I had an RS-232 port in the back, but I'm not like super... Uh, experienced in that area and um, uh, just didn't think that I was going to be able to get it working but I did a little reading online uh, and I found that uh, there's a fellow and I believe his name and if forgive me if I get it pronounced wrong but Nirovek Patel um, I believe he's an IT professional uh, anyway he he designed and uh, and built the software uh, to uh, interface with this RS-232 port and connect it to your computer. So it took me some time, a few weeks of playing around with it. When I, you know, I, I thought I had a uh, uh, a null modem, I did not. I wound up having to order a StarTech. And this is actually you can see it blinking down there. That's my modem. That I have running over to my computer, and we can see that we have the software up and running on here. Let's see, we'll put the graph on it as well. All right, so I am really geeked about this software. This is fabulous stuff. Um, I have since I started uh, warming up this unit, uh, when I first turned on a 34401A, and I had 10 volts, uh, 10 volt reference plugged into it, we started out at zero samples, and um, right at the moment we have a total samples of 1,071, and it uh, it does some averaging and plotting, and and here's the plot, the graph graphical plot of this thing is on here. And right now I'm running 9.9999, uh, oh, seven, somewhere in there. It's over 6.5 anyway. Um, 
and we are still warming up <clears throat> and since we are temperature controlled we have the effect of the temperature controller in there as well during the cool down uh, area or cycle you're going to see the uh, uh, the voltage trail off and then you're going to see it spike on again when the uh, uh, temperature warm it tries to warm it you'll see it jump up and you'll come up and and every time it does this, uh, as this thing is warming, we're going to see ourselves elevating. So uh, the warm-up period is like three, four hours uh, to really get the stability out of this thing. But I am really geeked. I've got this thing working, and it's working beautifully. Thank you, uh, Miravec, or Mr. Patella, if I pronounced it wrong. I first uh, ran across this uh, software on the EEV blog, Electronics Community Forum, and uh, a fellow mentioned in here that uh, he couldn't find standalone software, so he built one that works on Windows 10, 8, and 7, and he generously offers it free to the community out there. Um, uh, he doesn't uh, promise support on it, but... Uh, he does provide links uh, from GitHub and from here the download. I wouldn't wait too long uh, to uh, collect the software if you're at all interested because you don't know how long it's going to last on here. And then he offers some uh, uh, screens to show you what the usage is going to be like. And, and at the bottom down here, um, he talks about the communication setup on the HP 34401A and how you want to enter the menu and so on. Uh, I also looked up the manual for the 34401A and between the two of them I figured out how to eventually do this. So let's, uh, let's keep going. We'll show you how we set things up. Okay, so you can see the RS-232 connected up to the port on the back of the uh, HP and uh, I'm just running a straight through cable uh, and then f connecting that right now to the uh, StarTech um, uh, null modem cable. The null modem cable is special in that the communication is set up inside so that um, the unit on one end is talking while the unit on the other end is listening and vice versa. Um, so it's special wiring. Uh, I needed to get a, uh, a null modem cable. This one comes with some special features that are recommended. Uh, when I was doing my reading online, um, I think it's called an FTPI uh, capability in the thing. I'm not clear on all of it, but uh, that the StarTech had it. And it, the other end of it is a USB uh, connector. So I connected that into the back of the computer, and uh, uh, that gave me uh, communication capability from the computer to the unit. However, I had to make sure that I set the HP 34401A up so that it was uh, communicating properly as an RS-232 device. So to enter the menu, you hit Shift. And you hit menu, uh, you can go, like here's A, you see blinking, and it says measurement system, B is math, C is trigger menu, D is system menu, and then E is I.O. So this is what I want. So now I hit a down arrow, because we go first to the level of the menu we want, and then we get to the uh, item within the menu that we want to modify. So we go down. Do I want the HP 1B address system? No, I'm going to go to the interface. And I hit down, and I've got a choice, RS-232. And uh, one of the things I did uh, when I was setting this thing up originally was that um, I confirmed my choices each time. Like I went um, interface, I'm going to go down to RS-232, and I'm going to say automatic and it captured that and it kicked me out again so now I'm gonna to have to go back in 
I don't know that this is the best way to do it, but uh, but it worked for me. So now baud rate, I chose 9600 and I accepted it to kick me out. Uh, I'm going to go back in again. Um, we're good there on the parity. Uh, want none with eight bits, and I'm going to confirm that. And finally, language. I want SCPI, and I'm confirming that as well. So now I'm all set up. I should be able to communicate. I've connected up. I've got my uh, null modem working. All I got to do over here now is bring up the software which I downloaded and placed on my computer so uh, let's see I'll get there uh, where am I want install here we go RS232 software HP 34401A and there it is okay so I'm going to choose uh, to configure and connect so it brings up a list of um, RS-232 ports it sees. It sees one on COM1 and one on COM3. Well, the COM1 I'm using to communicate to my printer. COM3 is the new one. So I double-click on it. It brings COM3 over to this area, and I say Connect. And I see a reading up here, so I've connected. I can put myself in a manual range if I want. Uh, I can slip in a... Uh, resolution so I'm saying point zero 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 one so I want to be within 10 microvolts of resolution I'm gonna set that it confirmed that I set my range to 10 volts it confirmed that I set my resolution the way I want I want my impedance to be uh, higher than 10 meg I want to go to 10 gig right now we're at 10 meg it says so I put impedance on and I can confirm that it now is switched to 10 gigs, which it is. So we're good. And uh, now I'm going to bring up uh, graphs up at the top. And I'm saying show the graph. Here it's bringing graph up. At, at, I'm still a novice at this. But here we are. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 points on the graph. We are ranging from 4, 9, uh, 3, 1 to uh, 4935 right now. Um, 0.4 microvolts, I don't know. Yeah, 4, 0.4 microvolts at the moment. So we're pretty stable actually. With all of that variation going on here, it looks like we're not stable. But the reason it looks that way is that we're we've zoomed in so much we're looking at millions of a volt in here so fabulous just fabulous and up at the top we can see that we are uh, running 9.123493321 right at the moment 334321 and warming up okay so here we can see the effect of the warm up so that's that sort of logarithmic looking curve where we're approaching 10 volts. We are right now at 9.99999. So 9 point and then five nines. Approaching 10. And uh, we can see in between the effect of the uh, uh, temperature control system, the heater that's inside. And uh, we see that we basically go up uh, approximately 5 uh, microvolts, and then we drop down 5 microvolts, and then up again and down. And it's periodic. Um, not absolute, but, uh, but in pretty, you know, pretty consistent all the way up to the top. And once we finally level out, we should see that we maintain approximately 10 plus or minus 5. And uh, we'll see what that what happens with that as we get there. But I mean, here's this is a graph of 2,700 points right now. Uh, if I had taken that by hand, it would have driven me crazy. Probably not even doable. So I am really 
quite excited and uh, happy to have this. So uh, I ordered a 25-foot uh, um, RS-232 cable. So I'll easily be able to run uh, from the meter around the shop and to my computer. Because my computer is opposite the room from the, uh, from the meter, which right now is on the bench, but normally goes in the hole right up there in the front. And then uh, my computer over in this area. Uh, I also have a, a Keithley 2015 with an RS-232. It, however, is not a null modem. It's a, re a standard modem, and I, I have one of those on hand. It's a, a USB to RS-232 uh, cable. And I may attempt to uh, uh, try and run that also. We'll see what happens. Well, here we can see that um, the output of the LM399 reference being measured by the HP 34401A is running 10 volts plus or minus about two and a half microvolts. And it's been holding that now for the last, oh, 180 seconds. So, yeah, so three minutes. Quite impressed with it. So that's it. Um, I think uh, many of you with a 34401A, you could do the same. It's a little scary, you know, you're investing a little bit of money, uh, but um, but if you do what I did, it stands a real good chance of working out for you. So thanks for listening, and uh, we'll uh, be using this to check out a lot of our equipment here, so you'll be seeing more of it in the future.